All right, I'm going to talk through the process of installing and using Research Unix version 7 in the OpenSIM Age PDP uh, emulator. I'm going to do this in Linux because that's what I'm using these days. I've done many times in Mac and I've done it even on Windows, but this is really kind of for Linux. In the Linux version I'm using is basically uh, LMDE 5, which is LC, which is fairly recent. Um, on a think center M92. It's got quite a bit. It's got 32 gigs of RAM and uh, lots of stuff. Uh, it's, it's an i7-3770, which isn't all that powerful, but there are eight cores, so it works pretty well. Um, your mileage may vary if you try it on something uh, less. But this version of Debian or Linux Mint is uh, feature compatible with Linux Mint, which I've also done it on many times. So it should work regardless. So I'm going to close my system configuration stuff. And this PDF that I'm going to be following is the one I wrote way back when. You can find it on my blog, dkizzer.github.io. Um, go to the search bar here, type in research. Scroll down a little bit, find the one that's most recent. It's going to be three. I don't know why they're out of order. I guess I did them the same day, but 3.1 um, is the one I'm going to show you. I may have an update before before the before you get this video. Uh, but anyway, this is the PDF. You can pop it out and then download it and all that kind of stuff. I uh, just click the little download button. So this is what we're going to be using as our source. I'm going to go ahead and kind of show you from. Uh, Blank slate. So we're gonna get the uh, we're gonna get and let me get that out of the way. Let me pull up the PDF. All right. If we look in the PDF, one of the things that's gonna walk you through right away as a preliminaries is you're gonna need OpenSimH um, in order to get very far on this. You to to get that, you go to the OpenSimH.org website, click on the download. It gets downloaded somewhere. Let's just call it downloads. All right. There it is. Um, and it, it unzips to here. If you follow the readme cmakemd file, which I guess I can open up in code. All right, and then I pull up the preview. Yeah, pretty much don't need much else besides that. But anyway, you can read about it, why cmake and all that kind of stuff and the blah, 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 blah. It's very good stuff, especially if you're on some alternative uh, OS or path or you want to use Ninja or any of that kind of stuff. For me, I just scrolled down until I found something that kind of told me what to do. Um, in this case, uh, I am definitely going to run this. This is uh, Travis Steps. This gets the dependencies. Used to, I'd have to know what they were. You know, let's see, PCRE and other other libraries and stuff. But now Travis figures all that stuff out for me and then downloads it. Okay, and it'll work against Homebrew. It'll work against uh, App. It'll work pretty much anywhere. Um, and then keep scrolling down and eventually get to the next thing to do. And there, let's see, building the simulators. That's the idea. <laughs> All right. So the, the directions here are git clone this, but you've already downloaded a version of it. CD into that directory, run this script, okay, SH Travis steps, which will do the install of stuff. All right. And then run CMake, CMake Builder. And it takes a few minutes and eventually it's done. And it puts the binaries into a directory called bin. So if we look in here, we're going to bin. I'm not going to do it because it would take a while and it's pointless. It just works. It gives you all these different emulators. The only one we're going to use today is PDP11. All right. And I've copied these off into my bin directory, which is in my path. And I got an open SimH thing. And so it runs from there. So there's my PDP11. That's how we're going to get the, the emulator to do its thing. All right, without much further ado, close off some of this stuff. And, uh, yeah, let's do it. I don't know how it got all small all of a sudden, but there it is. Okay, make them so we can see both at the same time. Can you see me? Oof, like you need to see me. But anyway, all right, so I'm in my root directory somewhere. Uh, yeah, WSN, okay, so there we go. Um, I'm going to follow these directions pretty much verbatim. I'm going to go ahead and make directory with the dash P, which dash P is just a, um, if it doesn't exist, it'll create it. Um, and if it exists, it doesn't create it. And then I tell it I want it in this retro work area. I want a V7 and inside of V7, I want a disk directory, work directory and save directory. And then I change into my disk distribution directory. So sometimes when you cut and paste out of 
PDFs, you get weird selections. <laughs> so you may have to do it one line at a time, and sometimes it may not even work. But if you practice at it, you'll eventually get there. And then for me, I'm going to paste off into this terminal window. Um, I'm going to use the middle button. I've got a selection there, and the middle button carries it over here. Yay, look at that. Um, and then we can look in here and see that there's nothing there. All right, we can see we're in that directory. Yay. So then I'm going to get a copy of Keith Bostick's tape records in the Authors Make Tape Pearl. And this is where one of those weird selection things, and you can already tell that ARIA 2C gets wonky over there. All right, if we copy this, which I'm going to, and then we paste it into a text editor, you can see how wonky it is. All right, yeah, it's nuts, okay? And if I was better adept at my editor here, I could column select or something. But for now, I'm just going to type ARIA 2C in front of all these. And I could paste them on all at once, but that's sometimes fraught with peril. We'll try it though, uh, why not? Right. But if that didn't work, or you get some weird result and you don't get all these files, then you gotta do it one line at a time. Say la vie, it's just tough luck. All right, it looks like it's working. All right, uh, yep, let me get the last one. Do LSI, it looks like, uh, sorry, LS-L. It looks like they're all there and they look reasonable to me, okay? So that's that one. Now I'm going to change mod on the make tape Perl file, which uh, is if we look at the make tape Perl file, we can see it's not a complicated thing. I wrote it a while back, and it's inside of it. It's from their the Two's website. But anyway, basically uh, I took what was extant everywhere and um, cleaned it up a little bit, made it work better. Uh, but nothing really fancy there. So I'm just going to make that executable. And then I'm going to run it. Well, first I'm going to change into the work directory. I'm going to copy those files out of the disk directory. So the disk directory is kind of pristine. So if we look in here, those are the distribution files. I just downloaded them into this directory, disk. Now I'm going to take and I'm going to uh, copy them off into my work directory. And then I'll unzip them and stuff over in the work directory. So I can keep these nice and clean. All right, if we look here, all right, I'm in my work directory. We see the unzipped versions and that make tape thing is all ready to go. All right, and then I'm gonna run that. All right, so there it goes. And all it does is it just takes each of these raw files and combines them into uh, what was originally basically the V7 tape image, all right? But ready to be read into SimH and that kind of thing. All right, so if we look here against the file list that was delivered as part of these six files, we can see that these are the, the record sizes, okay, 16 records, 14 records, one record, 22, 22, 202, and 937. So they match. Yay. And just to be sure, <laughs> all right, we'll run uh, SHA-1 checksum against it, and sure enough, it matches. And it matches, if you wanted to, you could just grab the v7.tap file off of twos and you'd be good to go. All right, so we clean up a little bit. I'm gonna get rid of some files and then we'll, we'll be left with just the tape file in the, work, in the work folder, all right? So there it is, that's the tap file. All right, and then cutting off a tiny bit of this. Oh, I see, okay, there we go. All right, so I'm gonna grab this because I can, Weirdly enough, these kinds of things, they, they copy and paste just fine. But we're going to cat this set of lines into this tape.ini file that SimH will use to initialize the simulator, so, or the emulator. So we're going to set the CPU type to an 1145. Uh, we're going to tell it, it it's OK to idle, I guess, basically. Um, then we're going to create an RPO, uh, RP6 disk uh, with no auto size. And then we're going to create another one um, so there's RPO600 and there's RPO61 disk. So we'll have two disks available to our system. And then we're going to tell it about the tape file and it's going to boot the tape file. That's the plan. So I paste it over here and it has created a nice um, tape.ini file. Yay. You should, if you're familiar with Unix, this is no brainer stuff. All right. And now I'm going to actually run PDP 11 simulator or emulator or simulator, well, whichever, um, PDP-11 with tape.ini. So here it goes, PDP-11. It is a, a little bit uh, of um, uh, ugly crud, but you can ignore kind of all that. That's just telling you where you are. And then you have a prompt, and then it's running the attach 
command that you told it to run. All right, and then it's going to create that file. It's creating that file. Uh, it's scanning the tape file. Says yeah, it's got a tape marks. Yay! And then it boots. Okay, and this colon prompt is not SimH. It's actually the tape booting. All right, so it's got an operating system. It's kind of a very simple operating system. It's not Unix yet, but it it has a couple of programs that we're interested in. Um, you can read about it in the PDF. But anyway, um, I'm going to run the tape mark, uh, the third program on the tape or whatever, which is going to copy a file system of size 5000. And where's it going to copy it to? It's going to copy it to the a Hewlett Packard 0, 0, the first drive, if you will. It does it. It didn't complain. Life is good. Now that we have a disk drive that has the, the tape files on it, if you will, or hmm, not exactly. Oh, let's see. Okay, we were on TM. I don't remember. Anyway, this is just to prepare our route um, for the file system. Now we're going to actually copy it over. So we're going to run the fourth program on the tape. Um, and it's going to ask us, what's your tape source? We're going to tell it the fifth program and the disk, HP00. And I'm a little fuzzy on what all it's copying over, but it's important. <laughs> so there it goes. All right, it copied the tape over to that point. Now we can boot the root file system off of the disk drive. So it's copied the, the root file system onto the from the tape onto one of our first hard drive. So we are able to then boot that. So let's do that. All right, there it is. And there's a, on that disk in the root, there is a file called HPTMUINX, okay, which is the kind of delivered kernel for our HP devices, with our HP with the TM device. So we have an HP drive, a hard drive, and a TM uh, tape disk, tape drive. So this is the kernel that knows about those things. And so we're going to tell it, yay, there it goes, right? Got a little bit of memory used, don't worry about it. Um, it's also, if we were to look at things, let's say that I type uh, LS, all right? It's slow for one thing, and it's all uppercase, which is kind of weird. So we're going to speed it up and make it so that it's mixed case, all right? The, we're going to use the ST, set TTY command. Uh, we're going to tell it to, yeah, lowercase is good. And then we're going to tell it new lines have zero delay after them and carriage returns have zero delays after them. So when we do that, the next time we type ls, it's instant and uh, more like what we're used to. All right, we're going to get rid of the other kernels and I don't like HPTM, it's a mouthful, right? So we're just going to make it into a Unix kernel. So I'm just going to copy it to a Unix file, yay. And then I'm going to get rid of all the other brands uh, but I'm leaving HPTM, uh, that, but I'm going to get rid of the HPHT. I'm not using a HT type of tape drive. I'm not using an RP disk. So neither of the RP kernels work. So this kernel cleans it on up. You can leave them on there. It doesn't hurt anything. Um, now I'm going to sync the disks because we've made some changes. Yay. So I sync them. Yay. And then I'm going to check and see what I got. I should only have two kernels. One is the HPTM Unix and our Unix, and they're the same. All right. um, 52, 5, 850, 850. Yeah, we're going to create some device files uh, just so we can uh, expect our devices to work properly. They're not currently hmm, over configured, let's just say. So there's a template. You can read about it in here, but we're going to just use these commands here. So I'm going to change into my dev directory. I'm going to use the make node command to uh, build one of the special files from our P0, the first hard drive, uh, major device six, minor device zero. And then I'm going to make the swap as the second partition on that baby. And then we'll um, tell it about the second um, RP disks. And we're going to create a raw device for both of the disks. That one's a, what do you call it? Block device. That's the first one. And now this is the character device. It's a raw. You can write it character by character. All right. And then let's see. Yeah. Now we're going to change the mod on uh, 
all these devices so that group they're group writable, group and other writable, and then we'll sync them up. Make sure that the changes get written to disk proper, and then we'll make the the TU10 the tape device uh, using the make command, and then it it does its thing. It creates the magnetic tape zero, which is basically like for I think tar and. Uh, a couple others, and then there's a raw tape device as well, character device, and then a non-rewinding. Okay, Th this one is rewindable, this one is not, kind of thing, or maybe it's the other around, I don't remember. All right, so then it creates those devices, and at this point, you got a bunch of uh, devices in your um, dev directory, All right? And that you need to, if you follow these directions, you need to have exactly these, All right, a console, uh, major device zero, minor device zero, kmem, um, the kernel memory, uh, eight one, and then make file, which is not part of that, and then mem, uh, mem device, the tape device, the non rewindable tape device, the dev null, uh, the rewindable tape, the first drive, the second drive, the raw version of tape of di uh, hard drive one and hard drive two, and then you have a swap partition on well. It's actually on this uh, first drive in the second partition, and then TTY, all right, character device. So that's what you should have. If you don't, you better figure out why not, because nothing's going to work real well if you screw these up. All right, so the next thing to do is create a file system on the second disk to hold user, because user won't really, well, it probably would fit on that in a single device, but it just, it's easier to do. Um, and if you were using RP device, you'd probably have to do it. Um, but it's easier to have it on a second drive. So I change the main directory and then I run MKFS, make file system. It's the same kind of thing on Unix, on Linux these days. Dev RP3, my second drive, and then how big I want it. I want it nice and big, 32, 272, 272, 278. Um, these, you read about it, you can find more about it. They're, the sizes are kind of, they're fixed for various uh, disk sizes. And then I'm going to check to make sure that things are that turned out well. So I run I check. It's not terribly good, but it does kind of do its thing. And we wait until it reports the number of files, the used, the free, and all missing. And hopefully it gets exactly these results. It takes time. Not too long. But maybe not. Come on, where's this thing? Okay, I apparently clicked somewhere in here during because it's all right. There it is, uh, exactly the same results. Okay, so now we're ready to restore the user file system because right now we have a blank disk and nothing on it. So, where we're going to get it is from the non rewindable tape device. So, our v7.tap, we're going to use, uh, we're going to tell it. To put it to dev null, which is kind of silly, but um, oh, we're gonna skip past the first six files. That's what this means. All right, thank you. Wow. Um, so basically, we're gonna we're gonna read from the non non rewindable tape drive. We're gonna put it forward six files uh, with the block size of twenty b and uh, twenty bytes, and that'll be that. Okay, there we go. We read 200 records and then now our tape is positioned properly for the actual thing. And so we're able to use the restore command to restore off of the rewindable tape device on and restore it to dev RP3. So there, here we go. Last chance restore. You got to hit enter here. That's a magic trick. Learned out of experience. And it'll take a, just a few seconds to kind of get to the end of the tape. Since I didn't click anywhere, we should see it. Um, let's do another scroll up. Okay, so there it is, in the tape. So now we're gonna mount the user directory, which is on devrp3, and we're gonna mount it on slash user. So we'll use the etsy mount command and do it, mount it. All right, no complaints, that's great. So it's mounted on slash user. So now we're gonna read again off the tape. <laughs> we're gonna read the first block from the, um, or actually we're gonna read out of the user directory, this MDEC HPU boot file and put it out to our first drive. We're gonna read one block. So if we looked in slash user, 
ls slash usable. That's good. There's an index uh, directory, and then inside of that, there's a number of files, one of which is the HPU boot. And if we look at those in some detail, slash index, right, we can see that there's 476 bytes is this guy. All right, so we're going to read that. And we're going to put that at the beginning of the uh, first disk, and that'll make it bootable. So that's all we're doing. Otherwise, all this would be in vain. We'd never be. We'd have to boot off the tape every time, and it's very annoying. Um, so once we've done this and written that out, we could actually uh, the next time we can not boot the tape at all. We don't even need the tape to boot. But for now, we're going to kind of move on. So we sync the disk a few times, um, and that's that. All right, so that's kind of stage one. So it says shut down gracefully in the dark. That really just means we synced everything. So it's okay to power it off with the power switch. Um, in, in the SimH world, that's a control E. Okay, stops the simulation and then Q exits the simulator. So that's a graceful exit. That's powering off the system. All right, um, we're going to test it before we back it up. So we've done this. We're going to create a new uh, boot INI file. I'll explain it here in a sec. All right. Um, so after disabling, okay, this is just telling us that when you see this disabling XQ, this is prompting the user so that they can not be wondering what's going on. Um, but after you see disabling XQ, type in the word boot. And at the colon prompt, type in HP00 Unix. That's helpful. And then some actual commands to the simulator. Um, one is this set CPU 1170, so we're bumping up from the 1145, we're setting the CPU memory to 2 megs, it's ginormous, okay, the 1145 I think maxed at 256 or something, um, and then we set it to be able to idle, we also set TTO, um, the touch, the, the teletype mode for output to 7 bytes, uh, there's all kinds of reasons why that is unnecessary or unwise or whatever, but for your sanity, <laughs> you want to set it to that because otherwise uh, Telnet's going to be freaky and weird. All right, so then we set uh, the RPU06 to no auto size again and we attach it. We do the same thing for the second disk. Then we boot off of the first disk, which is different. These on the first tape, um, I and I it booted off tape, but now it's booting off the RP. So without any further ado, let's just boot it off this. Uh, in boot, new boot, whatever, I and I. All right, so there it is. It gives us a nice little helpful prompt because otherwise we just sit here wondering what's going on. <laughs> okay, but we know now to type boot. And then we got a colon prompt. We're going to type HP 0, which is the first hard disk, and then boot the file in Unix off of it. And it boots, yippee ki -yay. And that's the same exact number, which is kind of important because if it isn't, we've done something kind of screwy. All right, and then we're going to do control D, which is a signal to the single user mode here to boot into multi-user mode. All right, before we typed, if you recall, STTY, LK, some all that nonsense, but control D will do the kind of same thing. So control D, it gives us the restricted rights, use duplication, Western Electric, which doesn't even exist anymore, but it is now December 31st, 1969. Isn't that cool? And it tells us it's ready to log in. We're going to log in with root. And the password is root. Okay, you have mail. We're going to read mail to make sure that we understand that things are actually working in here. Um, so I'm going to type mail. It's going to say, hey, I got mail. Your secret mail has arrived. Well, it's nothing special. But I'm going to exit keeping the mail. So I type X. I'm back at the prompt. All right, so now we're going to gracefully shut down again. Uh, here we go, we're going to go sync, 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 and then we'll go control E, and then we'll go Q, and now we're sitting there. A uh, good idea at this point is to call this a pristine system. This is the delivered environment. We didn't really change anything. We just made it, we just created some hmm, device files so that our system actually knows about the devices that were delivered with it, but it's pretty pristine. So we're going to save it off. So I want to change directory from the work directory up to the main directory. And I'm going to tar this up and then into a directory called save, which we created earlier. It's very quick. And then you'll have a six and a half megabyte V7 pristine tar VZ2, which basically you can unzip that and be at this point in the process. 
Next up, we're going to create a user and set some same TTY options. Um, yeah, so let's do it. So we got to get back into the work directory, start up the uh, normal boot, type boot, type HP 0, 0.0, Unix, and then control D. All right, root, login as root, root. We won't check our mail again, but we're going to do this little thing here. We're going to create a profile file that has some basic, instead of that pound sign for, you know, delete a letter and uh, at sign for delete the line, we're going to use the more standard control H, control U. We will set the delay on new line of carriage return to zero, and then we'll set a basic baud rate of 9600, which is completely ignored inside of this terminal, but maybe helpful when we try to tell that later. So we're just gonna create this little file and this will paste in just fine. All right, and then we'll control D to exit and log back in so that those things take, take effect. All right, next up, we're going to create the user. So to do that, we're gonna edit Etsy password. We're gonna use ED. ED is a great editor, even in modern era. Um, it's phenomenally powerful for such a old, old, old binary, but uh, it, it really does some spectacular stuff. So we use Ed on Etsy password, and it tells us that there are 141 bytes. And this is important because unless you did something, it should still be exactly the same. And then we're gonna tell it what lines we wanna work on. I'm gonna, I'm gonna work on from the first line to the last line, that's what the dollar thing is, and then I'm gonna print it. So this will just print the whole file. Okay, in this case, we've got a root user, daemon user, uh, sys, bin, UUCP, and DMR for Dennis Ritchie, right? So we're gonna add a user, spectacular, it's tons of fun. I'm gonna create a user called WSEN, and then there's two colons, because we don't use that second field. And then I'm gonna put my user ID up there, way up there, and then I'm gonna be part of the bin, uh, group just like DMR because I'm going to do the same kind of things that DMR did. Uh, a couple of colons to get our fields right and then user slash recent, and then a colon. All right, that's adding me as a user telling it that I'm going to log into user wsent. So I've done it. I'm going to, uh, after I've done that, a dot on an empty line ends the mode that I'm in. So it's going to exit the um, append mode. That's what the A was. Sorry. Um, and then it's back to command mode. So I'm going to tell it to write the file. Uh, not with the big W though. I must hit cap lock or something. Maybe, well, maybe that's a little W. Okay. It is a little W. We're going to, well, it worked. Who cares, right? And then I'll cue. Ah, my God. Can't type to save my life today. Ah, uh, cue. There we go. So obviously you can make a lot of mistakes. If we cat Etsy password. Oh my God. It is not type in day. Let's see, past We can see that I didn't screw it up. It's, it's there. Okay, life is good. All right, and now I'm going to create a home directory and I'll just copy and paste because it's easier than me typing all that crazy stuff. So there it is. Make their user WSIN with two ends. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Um, and then we're going to change the ownership to me from whatever it is, uh, I guess probably root. Um, and then we'll also change the group to bin because the group's whatever default it has, and I don't really care, and you don't either. You just want it to be right. So there we are. I can log in as my user, and then I can change my password, so I will. I won't tell you what it is, but it's very spectacular. Okay, and now we can, um, well, we're going to, before we log out and log back in, let's go ahead and change the profile. Let's create a profile file with the same defaults that we used for DMR or for root, I think it was root. All right, so there it is. Um, we check it to see what we got now. And you'll see that the speed is 9600 baud, even though the doc says 300. The erase is set to pound and the kill is the at sign and then even odd and all that stuff, basic stuff. We're gonna ignore all that, but we log back in, supply our password, type STTY again. And now you can see I've got control H and control U. So my, yeah, that's, that's. The... All right, we can see who's logged in. Make sure that it's actually me. There we are, I'm logged in, I'm on the console. 
it's still December 31st, 7.15. All right, so Grace will shut down again to save our work because we know it works now. Um, control E, Q, and I think we can back, we can do another backup. This time I'm gonna save it as multi-user. So if I ever do this again, I don't have to do it over and over again. I can say just restore from this point. Trust me, I used to do it without saving my work and it was kind of uh, tragic because you lose track of where you are in this process and things don't work. So there we got, now we got a pristine system and we got a multi-user system that are known to work. So next up is setting up multi-session. Multi-session is the hardest part of this uh, process, I think, but it's also the most interesting because even back in the day when V7 was around, this works on V6 too, by the way. Huh. But in V7, um, which was good, I don't know, 70, 69, 70, somewhere, I don't know. Okay, don't, don't, don't harass me on that. But basically a long time ago, um, you can still log in multiple times, multiple users, and we will demonstrate that. So let's get, let's start a system from the work directory that is a normal boot because we're not ready to boot into multi-session yet. Then we'll log in, or we'll start boot, and then we'll start HP, zero, comma, zero, it gets old, but there we go. All right, logs in, control D. So we're in this mode. We can log in as root. Well, let's make sure, yeah, log in as root. Root. All right, and we're gonna basically reconfigure the system, which is currently booting off console, to support 16 DZ11 lines. Yay, this is apparently the way to go back in the day. Oh man, it works fine. The DCI device works too, but it, it's not as cool apparently. I'm not entirely sure why we're going DZ, but we are. So the first thing I wanna do is I want to change into the user sys conf directory. This is where all the building of the system will always take place. Um, and you can read about it here, but you can also read about it in the uh, V7 um, setup file from Dennis Ritchie, uh, I think, and Ken Thompson, uh, which I followed pretty much to the T up to this point. So it's a great document. So anyway, it's, easy, it's changing into this comp directory. We can look around here. You got some make file, a couple of loco things, uh, then an object file, another object file, the C source, the assembly source, and then a bunch of kernel-y stuff. And this is really just, we're not gonna do much uh, with what's existing there other than I'm going to add makeconf.c. So there is a file called makeconf. So we're going to edit. <laughs> oh, that's maybe where edit comes from. Um, but anyway, there it is. We're going to use ed on the makeconf.c file. I can print stuff. So if you're curious what we're going to do, um, I'm going to go from 240, line 240 to like 260, and then I'm going to print it. And we'll see what we're going to do is we're going to make a direct, an entry just like this DC one. We're going to make one before the DC one. All right. So I'm going to do this 249 add, which will put me into a pen mode. And then I'm going to do this one line at a time. Why? Because it's, it's a tricky business and we want to make sure that we don't screw it up. All right. So there's that line. And then we have this line. Do I know what exactly what these do? Yes, but I'm not gonna tell you. Um, because it would be way more than you need to know of it. But basically it's creating the uh, the driver file, uh, an entry in my call for our driver. Do I know exactly what it does? Probably not. I have a fairly good idea. That would probably be my idea. All right, so I'm making progress on this paste but I'm doing it one stinking line at a time. Uh-oh, it's got a comma on its own line. Oh, that's because my thing is too short. Okay. Okay. Basically because my, um, what you call it, I, uh, yeah. My terminal window is too short, so it wrapped. Not a big deal. Okay, we've done these lines. So we've got all these lines so far. Yeah, it looks good to me. Then we're going to do dot to get out of that mode. And we're going to 
do an append at line 45 because we're going to add it into another data structure. So we go into that mode and we do another cut, another cut and paste. There we go. All right. And we have a dot, right? We want that number right there, 14740, to match that number because otherwise we didn't do enough lines or we did the wrong lines and it's just tragic. Probably ought to copy the file before you edit it. I didn't think of that, but that's probably a good idea. And then we'll quit the file. Okay, and we're ready to uh, build makeconf from its source. So there's makeconf.c, and it's built, and it builds a.out, so we're going to copy it over to makeconf. And then we're going to copy, there's an existing uh, hptmconf file, so let's take a look at that, at hptmconf. All right, that knows about an HP device, that's our drives. Uh, knows about the root, knows about swap, knows about swap low, it knows about in swap, whatever like these are. And then it knows about our tape device. So we're going to reuse that because that sounds like a good set of base devices, but we're going to add DZ. So the first thing we're going to do is copy it over to my comp. Then we're going to append DC to that uh, file. So it's now it's my comp looks an awful lot like HPT comp, except where it's got a line DZ. And we're ready to rock. So we're going to use makeconf. We're going to pipe the input from myconf. And it builds the console at 60, clock at 100, clock at 104, parity at 114, the tape device at 224, the HP device at 254, and our DZ at 300. So that matches this perfectly. So we're ready to build our kernel. And you can see how far we've come in this world uh, with this set of devices. So I'm going to get rid of the existing um, object files. And I'm going to run make, and it's going to take forever. Okay, maybe not forever, about two seconds. Um, but even back in the day, it only took a minute or so. Um, today, we're, we suffer, right? It's horrible. Now, we're going to use checksum, which is not a really terribly accurate thing, but it works okay. Um, and it should have exactly the same number. Okay, if it doesn't, something about our build wasn't successful. And what, or what, it wasn't what we expected it to be. So now we have a, we've built a Unix file, a new kernel. So we're going to move this kernel and we're going to call it the mUnix for multiple uh, session Unix. All right, so we have that now. So over in root, we have the original, our um, copy of the original, and then this new um, kernel called Linux. All right, so we're ready to boot, except if we booted now, it would be looking for some TTYs that don't exist, and it would just sort of hang. It would be painfully difficult to fix. So we're going to fix our TTYs file first. So we're going to use Ed again, and it's going to pull it up. There's 266 lines. We're going to use this command here, which is familiar to anybody that's used SED or uh, VI or something. But we're going to change from lines 2 to 17, which is the 15 or, or 16 uh, TTY lines 0 to 15. We're going to change the dot, which is disabled, to a 1, which is in it. That's all we're going to do for all those lines. Um, yeah, let's do that. Well, let's see. Maybe not. Let's do this. 2 to 17. Let's print them. Okay, there's the lines. They got zeros right now. And what we're going to do is we're going to match on this first one and change it to a one. That's the idea behind this set command here. Or, sorry, substitute command from um, Ed. So there it is. It's going to change whatever it finds as the first character, the first match. It's going to change it to one. All right, so now if we do 217, print, you can see they've all changed to one. Yay. So we can write it. We can quit it. And we can use said to do the same kind of deal, except we're going to look for lines line 1 to 17. Um, and we're going to look in that file. So there it is. You can see it's it shows everything, including our console. All right. Yeah. So next thing to do is to find out the major device so we can build our special devices. So we're going to take our CC file and look for the DZ file. Sorry, look for DZ. It's going to show us what we'd expect, some stuff, and then blah, 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 and then it's going to say it's 19. 
So our major device number for this, uh, for these DZ ports or whatever, is going to be 19, and then we'll go uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, through 15. All right, so we're going to create these devices, and if we try to copy-paste, it's going to be all wonky -o, really bad. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a text editor, um, and we're going to create these ourselves. So I type Etsy, Mignod, slash dev, slash TTY, 0, C, 19, 0. And I copy that a bunch, maybe 15 times. Yeah, I think 15 is good. All right, so the first one looks good. Second one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You get the idea. I won't play with that. Just let me finish typing it and we'll be good to go. 15 and 14. Oh, I'm shy one, so we'll get another one. And then we go up here and just tack on one. Whoops, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> wow. Nine, and 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. All right. And then I'm not going to copy these all at once because that just doesn't. I just don't like doing it. So we're going to take six of them or some random smaller than all of them number and paste them over. And then we'll do another set. And, uh, all but two. Okay. And then we'll do one more. Copy, paste. Oh, uh, yeah. All right. Here we go. So let's take a look at uh, slash dev. And it looks like TTY 0 through 15. Life's, life's good. Okay. So back to the doc. And then we want to change the mod on all these to 640. So there we go. Just cuts. They need to be that in order for things to work. So what is that? Read, read and execute, and or is just read. So uh, right. Let's see. Oh my god. <laughs> Let's just take a look. All right. That is uh, 640 on all the TTY stuff. Is uh, read, write, and read. Okay. So there they are. Yay, they exist and they're all good. So we're ready to sync it up and say we're going to test it in a sec here. So we sync them. We exit gracefully. And then we create a new boot file. I'll explain it. Uh, Yeehaw. All right. So it does the same prompting. It's still in 1170 with two megs, idle 7B, all that's the same. The two disks get added. But now we've added three new lines for enabling the DZ device, the DZ11. So we set, we enable it, we set a number of lines to 16, and then I set its starting port to 2222. Um, but you could pick something else, pick something greater than 1024, but um, less than, I don't know, 8,000 or something. And then it's going to boot off RP0. So that's the plan. This time we're going to boot, and we're going to boot off this uh, multi boot. Uh, INI file we just created. So there it goes. All right, it's listening on port 22222, which it really is, but it won't be responsive until it's actually running Unix. So the next thing to do is to type boot, just like usual. So we're going to type boot. And then we want to use that, that Monix um, kernel. So 00MUINX. All right, it loads up. And it's still not really able to accept multiple sessions until we control D. Now we're running in multiple se uh, multiple session mode or whatever. So, oops, sorry, I don't want to do that. Um, so I'm going to create a new window for this. Wow, that's enormous. <sighs> let's make it a little smaller. Okay, and now we can Telnet. You're going to need Telnet in order to do that. A sudo app install Telnet or something. Um, tell that to where? Localhost 2222. All right, it's connected to the DZ and it's got this crap because it doesn't know the speed of the thing. So just press enter and you get a login. And you should be able to log in as root, root, password. Okay, you have mail. You can do all the things you normally can do. All right, 
probably kind of slow for, well, that's not slow, but so I guess just logging in is slow, but once you get logged in, things are working. So there it is. We can go back over here and log in again. I'll log in as DMR. Uh, who's on the system? Get another one going. Let's see. Yeah. There we go. There we go. That was so jingle on this game. All right. So here we go. Uh, let's do the Telnet thing. Oh, fine. Telnet. Localhost. 2222. Here it is. Hit enter. Uh, let's log in with me. Uh, if I can remember my password, apparently. Can't type. Okay, who's on in the world? Who? It didn't work. Who? DMR's on console. Roots on TTY0. I'm on TTY1. So there it is. We got it back in the whenever, 70s or whatever. We could do this multi user thing even then. All right, so yay. Uh, we did all that. That's good. We got logged in. We did a who. We're all there. Okay, fine. So we're good. So the only thing really to do at this point is to log out. Control D. It goes back to the login screen. To get out of Telnet, you use Control in the right hand bracket thing. It brings you to Telnet prompt. I quit and Control D then. Uh, we'll do that for all these sessions. So Control D gets us out of there. Control bracket gets us to the Telnet prompt. Q gets us out of there. Control D is there. No problem, right? <laughs> All right. And then we'll just uh, sync for grins and control E do in the simulation. All right. And now we'll make a backup of our multi session environment. Do, 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 do. There it goes. All right. And we've got three now. This uh, this one is usually a little bigger, but today it's not bigger. I don't know, it's weird, but it worked anyway. So let's do it again, and we're going to do some miscellaneous stuff at this point. We're going to run. We're going to log in as DMR and say hello world, which I just think is the coolest thing ever because <laughs> it's using a system that actually predates the book, I think, or at least it's the same time frame as the book. Um, all right, so. Without further ado, CD work, and this isn't in the PDF anymore. If, if I figured by this time you should know what you're doing. All right, but PDP 11, and then we can use, we can use, we, I'm sorry, we cannot use, we only can use uh, inboot INI unless we make changes to our TTYs, because if you huh, try to boot with the normal boot, it's going to not go well. So we're going to boot with this. Version HP00 Monix. And control D. We're going to log in as DMR. That's Dennis Ritchie himself into his account. This is just an amazing thing. Um, and then we're going to go ahead for DMR because we haven't set his profile yet, but we'll set his profile the same way we set all the others. We'll log out. We'll log back in. And now our TTY is set up correctly. All right. So I'm going to create a hello C file. I'm going to use cat. Um, you could use Ed as well. Ed's a little tricky when you do source code. It would probably work okay for this, but if you have pound signs like pound include or anything like that, it's gonna be, it's gonna think you're trying to escape uh, codes. Maybe not with this STTY, but don't don't worry about it. Just use this. So we're gonna say cat to hello C is basically what we're gonna do, and then we're gonna type in to cat, um, which is redirected to hello dot C our file. So you do main. We have an open brace. We have printf, and you can put white space in there if you really need to. Um, and then we type in hello world, <laughs> and then a carriage return, and of this, and of that, and of this. Okay, and then a close brace. And now the file's complete, so I give it the end of file signal, the control D, and we can cat hello.c. And there it is. All right, so we can build it with the infamous cc-o, hello, hello.c, and it doesn't complain, so it must be working, right? There it is, hello world, oh my God. That should be so satisfying to anybody that's a C programmer forever. Okay, uh, that's exciting and fun. So to learn a little bit more about this system, there was a tutorial back in the day, uh, computer-aided instruction called Learn, and it will teach you stuff like about files and that kind of thing. So may as well 
have it running. It's it's not drop dead easy, but it's not difficult to get running, but it doesn't work normally. So um, we have to do a little bit of work. So we're gonna set up, we're gonna log in as ourselves. So control D to get out of here, log back in as you. And then we're gonna CD to the source of the command learn. Yay. Uh, oops. I apparently can't type my password to say no. There we go. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> now we're gonna CD to, ah, to learn. All right, and we can see that there's some files there. Whoa, oh, exciting, right? Um, we're gonna type make, that'll build the system. It builds it, it doesn't complain. Life is greatness. Now it says you gotta do this thing, make lessons. So we're gonna make lessons. Uh, of course, uh, let's see, we'll try this control H thing. Lessons. Okay, get some errors, okay, because these files don't exist, but it's working. That took a little bit of trust, <laughs> but eventually I figured out, actually it's working. Uh, all right, so then we make the play and the, make the log. So we're gonna do that, make play, make log, two commands run semicolon, you know, get it. All right, it's got some more errors. But again, it's just because this doesn't exist. Now it exists. We can test it. We're gonna run learn. So learn is an environment. All right. And it, what it says is these are available courses. Files, editor, more files, macros, EQ, and C. If you want more information about the courses or can never use learn, do this, otherwise do that. Da, 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 da. So I'm just gonna type files. And I'll press return. All right. It says, if you were in the middle of this subject and want to start where you left off, type the last lesson number. Otherwise, print, 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 hit return. So we're going to hit return. All right. It says some stuff. And if I had my screen size properly sized, it would, do, you would see it all. So here it is. You should first understand special character, blah, 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 blah. Now we're not using pound sign and at sign anymore. We're using... Control H for the pound sign and Control U for the at sign. So you'd have to change that a little bit. But if you think it will get dog, type answer dog. All right. So it's, it's a, do you got it? Um, it's going to say reply answer word where word is the word is that it will be interpreted. For example, if you think it will get dog, type answer dog. If you think it will receive the word bark, type answer bark. Don't forget to hit the thing. All right. So we're going to hit uh, answer. Whoops. Control H. A-N-S-W, ooh, control is, all right, there we go, answer, whoa, Lord. All right, and I'm gonna see what I'm supposed to be typing here. So answer, da, 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 dog, okay? So, uh, sorry, no, we're gonna do some, answer with bark, so bark. And it says, oh, that's not right. Do you wanna try again? And I say, sure. And then answer in B. And you go read it, you'll figure it out. <laughs> there it is. Oh, look at that. Good. Lesson 1A moves on. Okay. And then you can hit backspace and no, you don't want to go on. Okay. And you can exit. So now learn is working. All right. Yay. So we have a fully working system with learn and with CC and all that kind of stuff. So we can just sync it up. Ugh. Sync. 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 Oh, close enough. All right, and then control E, Q, and all that kind of stuff. Yay, so we'll, we'll back it up. All right, so now we've got four files. We've got the pristine version. This is straight off the tape with the, the baseline devices working. Then we have multi-user, which is the, um, basically configured for multi-user system. Uh, it's booting off the drive instead of the tape. And then we have the multi-session file, which is basically the full-on telnet in and all that kind of stuff. And now we have this working system, which is kind of where we're at with all this stuff configured and learns working and all that. So that's it, celebrate. All right, the document goes on to uh, the PDF explains how to build OpenSimH. These are out of date a little bit because like I was saying, you use CMake and it works beautifully. I'm gonna update the document. Uh, MakeTapePy, this is a little bit more sophisticated of a, of a 
Python file. We're building the tapes because it'll build version seven, it'll build v6, it'll build uh, BSD uh, 4.3 or something. It'll do a bunch of that kind of stuff. Or you can just use make tape Perl. This is the same source as what you downloaded. Uh, various notes, yeah, or you can read about terminals and Mac and all that kind of stuff. So that's basically it. Thanks for watching.